Gordon Brewer from the practice of therapy. And thank you again for taking a look at the session note helper or purchasing the session note hel helper. And I hope that uh, you're finding it helpful for your practice and being able to streamline uh, your session notes, progress notes, whatever you want to call them and being able to, to get them done quickly just by going through and using uh, a few check boxes and that sort of thing. In this tutorial or lesson, I wanted to show you how you can begin to customize the session note helper for your own particular uses. I realized that um, the templates that I put together was just what I thought was just kind of some general clinical language that people tended to want to use in writing their session notes, but you might have a different way of wanting to format your notes and different language that you want to use in terms of phrasing and that sort of thing. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can begin to do that. So, but first let me go ahead, I'm gonna share my screen with you here and um, let you, um, uh, explain a little, a few things about the session note helper so that you can understand a little bit more about how it works. Um, if you have purchased the session note helper templates, you would have received two different, uh, would have been able to have access to do two different copies of two different Google, um, Google documents or Google files. So the first one is just the session note helper, Google form session note helper, and it'll look something like this. And in this tutorial, I'm just using a copy that I made, but it'll probably, it will be titled master copy of the session note helper 2.5. And this is the Google form. Now, the one thing about this in this Google form, I have got it in editing mode. And so, when you double click on it in your Google Drive, it should, this should come up. So I'll just give you a, uh, show you here. This is the Google Drive for the Session Note Helper. Here's the copy, um, and you just double click on that, and it'll bring up the Google Doc. Uh, and the other thing I'll say about this, let me go back to my Google Drive. When you get your initial master copy of the Session Note Helper, uh, be sure to make copies of it. Um, and the way you do that is just simply to right click on it uh, and then just click on make copy. And then you can rename it or whatever. I did that not only for the, the master copy of the session note helper, uh, the, Google, the Google form rather, but you also do that for the Google doc. So this is the doc template and then this one is the form template here. And you can kind of know based on the symbol here, the blue symbol is a Google Doc, the purple symbol or violet symbol is um, a Google form. So let me go back up here and kind of show you a few things about the Google form. You'll notice in the template that it's divided into sections, as you can see, here. section one of seven. And in each section, and I tried to put it in sections just to make it easier to just kind of follow, are differing, different questions. So this first question here is just simply name, and that is a short answer text. Over here on the right, you can change what the format of that is going to be. So this is a, obviously a short answer because you type in the name of the client on the form. There's the date, uh, the start time, end time, and when you click on that, you can, you can also choose the format, which is really nice with Google Forms. You can change it to a date format or time format, and so then it makes it easier to fill that in. Um, this particular question where you see it says patient couple, I'm a marriage and family therapist, so I work with a lot of couples but I only do not one note for each session. So I'm just designating in this question, whether it's a, it's a individual patient or a couple. So you'll notice here with all of these questions, regardless of the session, there is a question here at the top. Now, one of the things about making sure that the session note well, helper works correctly is that this question the literal question, whatever it is. So the question here is name. 
uh, there. And then down here, the question is mood. These are, uh, they're not really true sentence questions, but that's what I'm referring to here. This one is affect, that sort of thing. And if you go down orientation, functioning, um, then in the suicide risk section, there's suicidal thoughts, suicide comments. These are the individual questions right here. Now, on the Google Doc that came with it, there are various markers on this document. So when you apply the ad, app script, you hit the send button on your, on, your, on your Google form when you fill it out. Um, the markers, because of the app script, um, it knows what to put in there. So this name right here, under patient name, you'll notice it's in these double arrow brackets here, corresponds to this particular question about name. So that when you fill out this form and click submit, the app script, which again, in the tutorial, the, the startup tutorial, I talk about the app script, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. This needs to correspond with, with, with it, what is on your Google Doc template. Now, I've checked this with the, the templates that I'm sending out. All of these markers correspond to all of the questions on your Google form. So it's already set that way. So you might want to change some of this. So let's talk about that a little bit. As I mentioned um, in the startup guide, the reason all of this works is because of the app script that is loaded on the back end of the template here. And if you go up to this little symbol up here called add-ons, it used to be a puzzle piece, but now it's not sure what it is now, but it's kind of a weird looking symbol. If you click on that, you will see it that is preloaded on your template, should be. You might not have these others, but the session note should be there. And when you click on that session note, it will either give you a choice of either setup or check template. Again, this is all, all of this, the, you know, the details about setting up are in the startup guide, which you should have gotten uh, in that tutorial there. So, if you want to change something in here or add something in a particular question, um, for example, in this mood section, uh, mood question, say I wanted to add um, another, another, um, another response. Well, what I can actually do is go in here and where it says add option at the bottom, and it's going to say option 10, I can just actually type in um, a new response there. And that's all you have to do to add responses. You can also delete responses. So if I wanted to delete a response in here, I could do that. The key is you don't want to change the question because again, it corresponds over here to mood on your, on your Google Doc. Hopefully that makes sense. So just to add um, responses here or things that you might want, you might use more often in your, in your Google, in your writing your notes, you can just add them here in the different sections, the different questions, just don't change the question. So what if I wanted to add a whole new question? So, um, Let's say in this section here, I wanted to, in the assessment, and I'm just gonna make it simple here, I want to add a new question in here. So in order to do that, I just quick click on this add button here, question, add question, and it should add that. So one, one of the things about adding questions is after you have added your questions um, to your Google form. So let me show you again. Let me show you here. I'm just going to go down here and add a question. Here's the new question that put it in up here, but I want to move it down into this other section. 
And that's another little tip here is you can just drop and drag this to a new section here. So I'm just going to call this one just question two. And let's see, I'll add another option here. Um, of course, you can put in whatever you want here, but and name this question whatever you like. I'm going to also change it to check boxes. Another little hint here, if I had left it just as uh, multiple choice, when I went to answer this question, I would only be able to choose one of them. So with check boxes, you can check as many as you like. Again, another little tip there on using the Google Forms. So I've added the question, so now I need to add it to my um, master copy of the Google Doc. And again, the thing that you want to remember is that these markers here need to be to correspond with your questions. So I'm going to add this um, here, just do the double brackets with the, the arrow double brackets and call this question two. So that should correspond with this question two here. They should match exactly in the brackets there. Now, once I have done this, then after I have made all the changes here, then I need to do the setup again. And again, to go to this, you do the setup, and I'm gonna click setup first. And it's gonna ask me these questions about setting things up. And the other little tip with this is you want to do the, the setup again before you check it because the app script doesn't recognize that you have set it up again. So I'm going to allow this. Again, this is a, a fresh copy of this, so I haven't set it up before. Okay, there's the copy of the master that I made. And I'm going to just put this into the folder that I've created called Session Note Helper. And this is where my output folder will go, output document will go. And then ask you again, if you want to leave it in this format. And so in other words, the name of the document will be just the name of the client and the date. So I'll just leave that blank. Do I want to save it as a PDF? I'm going to say no. And so it tells me my session note is set up. So now I want to check it. I'll go back here to the, the add-ons and I'm going to check the template just to make sure that everything is there that it needs to be. And it will ask you what the document is that you're checking against. Again, it's just the same one that I picked before. All questions are in the template, so I set it up correctly. Again, the key to making it work correctly is after you add your questions here to your, to your Google form, you want to also make sure that you've added the brackets here and added that question to your, to your template. Um, but then, and do this after you've got both of these fixed, then you want to do your setup first and then do your check after your setup. If you try to check it before you do your setup, it will give you an error and say it doesn't match up. Even though you think it's matched up, it has the app script has to run fresh. So again, um, this also, the other thing about this that I will say is if you're going to make changes to your template, make a copy of it first, then make your changes to the copy, run the app script after you've made the changes, and then check it that way. Because once you, uh, to go back and change, uh, to run the setup again, the app script gets a little confused. So again, it's a little bug that we'll work on, uh, but again, that's how you make those changes. And so once, you, once you've got your changes made, then after you've gotten your, all of this change, you wanna go over here to send. 
And when you go to send, you'll go to this little box right here, which is the link. Grab your link here, just make a copy of your link and repaste it into your, into your browser. And when you do that, this will give you your working copy of your session note helper. And you'll be able to just start typing in stuff. So name, and with this, it's a drop down. So today's date is 15th of January. Your start time, a.m., p.m., um, 10 a.m. Okay, I filled out this form real quickly here, and I'm just going to click Submit. And after you click Submit, there's, there's the note I created. It's just name, and then it's got the... the responses I put into this. And so those are all the random kind of things that I picked off on the session note. And you see, it's just got name, the date I put in, the times, um, and that sort of thing. The other thing about customizing this, some people just prefer to do the check boxes. And then you can just go into this, um, um, this document and just type in other stuff. And um, then you can take this and you can cut and paste all of this into your electronic health record system or wherever you might be using it. Or you can just let it stay in the folder you designated. So I hope this has been helpful in helping you learn how to customize uh, your session note helper. Um, again, if you want to reach out to me with any questions, you can at gordon at practiceoftherapy.com. And I hope you enjoy using the session note helper, and I hope it's helpful for you and your practice. Take care, folks.